Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. I get a lot of emails about things to cover in the videos, and uh, one of them is was related to Joe Pass. In particular, his fingerstyle playing and how he approaches blues turnarounds. So I'm going to do some blues turnarounds in the style of Joe Pass. Uh, what's interesting about Joe is that in addition to using bebop blues turnarounds, he uses some traditional turnarounds, kind of mixed with traditional country blues turnarounds, if you will, uh, but they have um, a lot of interesting voice leading in them. So some of them you'll you'll actually recognize, but um, I'm going to do them in G. G is a key that Joe likes to play blues in. That's a really good guitar key. Uh, they can obviously be transposed to any key. I'll explain kind of how the licks work, too. Uh, the first one we're going to start out with starts before the turnaround. It has a little lead in. It goes like this. So what is Joe doing here? So there's a little lead in line before the turnaround happens. It goes, it starts with a major blues lick and then he goes, which is a really cool line in six. He uses a blues, um, then he plays two, uh, a, a tritone here. He's implying uh, a D seven chord there and then so it's slide up the, to the flat third. And he's using that natural uh, sixth there. So it's uh, more of the major blues scale. And then, then you got. So he's pedaling down, he's going down chromatically, but all off a of G pedal tone. So he's doing. G7, really, C major, C minor, G major. That's that's really a diminished chord there. And that's part of a D7 chord. But uh, I'm going to do it again. Lick number two is one that has really cool voice leading that has contrary motion to it. Uh, it goes like this. So it comes from the turnaround. Uh, we'll go from the chord just before the turnaround. Okay, so this has a, a voice leading that's moving inward, meaning the outer notes, the lower notes are moving up and the top notes are moving down. This is a hard one to reach. So you get B, G, F, so it's a G7. C major spread triad. And this is a uh, passing, this would be almost like a tritone substitute. Uh, and then I'm going to D, B, D, and then E flat seven to D7. I'm only playing those inner notes, but that. You get it great. You'll hear Joe do stuff like it. Joe does a lot of really cool stuff like that with contrary motion between the bass and the melody line. Okay, lick three is going to be a descending line, which once again is using some contrary motion, but in the melody line. So check this out. Uh, I'll start with the same. Uh... So what I'm doing here. I'm doing a hammer on. Uh, I'm doing a hammer on. And I'm picking. That's a thing to practice. It's really harder than, than it looks. So you do the hand, you, you're barring here, and Joe, you'll notice him barring a lot for things like G13 uh, so that he can isolate the strings better. He will also play it like this too, but a lot of times he plays it like this because he's finger picking. But you're going to go and you have to hit the low string at the same time. Then you go up to the seventh to F and you go F, D, G. It's 
So that has some contrary motion again. Right? So you're jumping from up to the flat seven. So there's F, that's G, that's F. So that's how to, how to find your place. So up here we have, and then we have, all right? It's like an A7 sharp nine chord. So I've got, which is really cool. So this is more like an A, uh, A flat nine chord, just with certain notes played. It's a tritone sub, but it's with the inner strings. So, um, On the turnaround, you could go uh, you do something like that, or you can go or if it's the end of the song, you could go what did I do there? I did A flat 9 to to G13, okay? So that's lick number 3. Lick number four is going to be kind of a variation on lick number three, except the top, we're going to use the top strings on the first chord. Check this out. Then I'm going to go. So I've got some contrary motion going. So I've got that sixth here. Uh, to that A7 sharp nine chord. That's like, uh, that's an A G major over F, but I, it's an incomplete chord. Okay. I'm going to start with, with the same right there. That's the tricky part. So here, That's a way to practice it. Just like, or, um, or, lick number five has a common tone at the top, which is the G. So it starts with a little. So we don't we don't have a complete chord here at the end with a with a root, but we we are simply following down following down the six. We can do a little E flat nine to D thirteen right there. Okay, the next lick uses some contrary motion with actual lines moving. So it's not quite as chordal, it's more uh, it's more contrapuntal. So check this out. It's a great ending line. So let me try it again. Two, three. Let me do it really slow. So I've got here, and then I put the sharp five in the D7 chord, and then to the roots, and then. So I'm going. Uh, so I've got. That's the first part I'd get. Um, Really cool because it's got this it's got a lot of contrary motion again. Let me try it again. One, two, three. That's a great would be a great turnaround tag, and obviously you can play that in any key. If you did it up here in B flat. If you're in the key of E five, it's 
it's actually easier to do that because this uh, is easier to play up higher because the frets are closer together. The next lick uses uh, some cool voice leading and it's down in the lower positions and it uses some open strings. It starts after the four chord, two, three. So I'm going a little tricky. So it's here. It's almost like a Chuck Berry like. Joe likes to do those hammer-ons like that. So you've got a G7 over F, E diminished 7. This is like an F9. Down to open G major chord there. Okay, lick number eight is a little bit more complex. It starts on the 2-5 before the turnaround, and it starts on an A minor 7 chord. It goes like this. This is on the turnaround that's like. But I'm gonna do it a little slower. So it'd be like this. Try it, like this. Okay, so what am I doing there? I'm using an A7 chord and using it as a passing tone like this. And then to a G sharp diminished chord, like a secondary dominant, just like going E7. So I'm going da 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 Another secondary dominant chord, so check it out. There's your A minor seven right there, and then and then up to A minor seven. So I'm going. Up to D7 sharp nine, sharp five. To D7 sharp not five flat nine. Then. So up here I'm going, I start in the F. I'm descending in six. I'll try it again. Three, four. Try it one more time. Try it one more time. That's a really cool one. It's just hard to get those, get those chords in there. You get used to it. So I'm doing that. There's a D7, and then right up to D7 sharp nine, uh, sh uh, sharp five. That's a G13 chord there, without the root. You don't need the root in there. Okay, lick number nine is a little higher on the neck. It goes like this. It slides in into a G7 chord. I only have the root, the third, and the seventh. I'm doing hammer into it. Three, four. So on. So I'm gonna do this. I have that moving in six. So this. It's going from minor six to major six, but changing strings. Then you could go if you want to using a tritone sub A7. So let me try it one more time. Three, four. And last 
lastly, lick 10 is going to be another variation lick. It's going to come off the five chord before the turnaround. Two, three. You're going to either start it like that or I'll start it like this. Okay, so the. So I'm going. So. Two, three. So I'm going, I'm going up to the third of a G7 chord, to the fifth, and then I'm going half step slide. Then up to the root. So that would be that, but you can't reach that there, so you have to play it here. So it's really finding where those intervals are. seven to D flat 13 so there's always this you always want to have voice leading in the melody part and you want, and going in contrary motion bass is moving down melody notes moving up or, right things like that that give it that movement so Joe is always trying to give it this contrapuntal feel to to blues on his turnarounds. It make it's what makes his solo playing so interesting is having all those moving lines like that. So practice those. You'll get them down. They're they're not too hard. A couple of them, a couple of the stretches down here are a little bit difficult. Just practice them uh, easily. You know, don't 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 kill your hand, and you'll get them. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book that talks about all these theories, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.